It is Monday, February 25th, 2019, 6.15. This is the facilities committee meeting. I'll have everyone go around and say their name. I am Aaron Durso. George Schmidt. Jeff Scott. Kathy Haynes. Mike Wolf. Curtis Fleming. Casey Blankenberg. <clears throat> Lauren Small. And Matt Cooter is our guest. Matt Cooter. Thank you. For you to bother asking. All right. <laughs> we'll uh, start. At the agenda, we might jump around because we're, uh, we're going to skip number two till Kevin gets here. So we'll start with the draft CMG RFP presentation. And there's Kevin, so we won't worry about it. Okay. Say you're present, Kevin. I'm present. Thank you. Okay, we're uh, wrapping up the uh, RFP this week. Base, the way it's going to work, we'll, we'll have the base response for all three areas, which will be the same as it currently is, fully staffed by a vendor. And then the alternate will remove maintenance in its entirety and any other adjustments that Casey has made with his recommendations of staffing. So Brian is wrapping that up this week. And our tentative timeline right now is March 14th will be the mandatory on-site meeting for interested vendors. March 18th, it'll be officially advertised. April 1st, it'll be due and reviewed that week. Then April 8th, it'll be back here at committee for review with hopefully an April 16th approval. Is everybody, gonna, does anyone have any questions? Uh, it's getting broken out a couple different ways, if right. I'm not mistaken. Have, so have the base and the alternate. I do have a question. I apologize. I thought it was 615. They asked no me to problem. sit in. So I jumped um, it a little. <coughs> it's okay. Um, <coughs> the curtain wall design companies, that's what we're talking about right now? No, no, no. no. I'm on okay. the we're holding on. We're, still on, the top we're on the uh, draft for the okay. uh, <coughs> the maintenance custodial gotcha. grounds. My, my bad. And so we're going to see different quotes, and that gives other different people opportunities to right. bid on it. And maybe someone that's more specializing in a, in a certain area like grounds gets an opportunity to bid. And, my only question was, you said the 14th is the pre-bid, but you're advertising the 18th. The, the official advertising, probably I'll back that up by a week and, and uh, put the legal notice advertisement out. I'll look at that tomorrow. Okay. I, I All right. I just, I just, don't, I yeah, thought that's what I heard you I say. The just, timeline. Okay. okay. But it'll, it'll be, <coughs> the goal is to have it approved by the 16th. So March. I know Nate from Falter just came in. Thank you for coming. Uh, just so you know, uh, be on the lookout mid-March for the bid specs for... Uh, that's kind of why I came. In. Yeah, I know. That's so, why. Yep. You kind of came in and I want to make sure you heard that. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Do you have any questions for us right now? I don't think so, no. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Anybody else before we move on? <coughs> All right. BEC masonry work update from Curtain Wall Design. And again, I'd like to thank Kevin for doing a lot of the legwork here. Thank you, Kevin. Do you want to jump in on the response that we received, Kevin? Or um, why don't you start and then I'll kind of fill in a little bit. Well, we, we did receive the response on uh, <coughs> January 29th. And the, uh, they, they had submitted back on January 9th their their uh, observations of condition, <coughs> what they felt should be done, and that was circulated. And moving forward, their next move would be to prepare specification for the brick repair, including repointing, caulking, and flashing, and coordinate with the board as to the general conditions. That would be $6,400. And then moving forward with the actual construction administration, they would uh, attend a pre-bid meeting, it's a whole series of things related to the actual bid process, uh, including site visits and observations. That's an additional 20,330 for a total of 26,730 for base services. Then I got confused, I'll be honest with you, on their optional services because they're refer referring to using the Jim Thompson plan and site visits to determine the full scope of work. And I contacted them and <coughs> basically they said if you want to use the Jim Thompson plan, there would be an additional $16,000 that 
would involve them. So if you want to jump in, Kevin, perhaps you've got further <coughs> clarification on what they're... What I was hoping we could do is to sit down more than just myself or by yourself with separate meetings with these people and say, <clears throat> let's review it together in a meeting fashion. Maybe we do it as a group and sit down and go over all of their individual things because the, when they talked about the repointing, the biggest portion of it was the bottom four feet. So I, I think some of it, even though we could map it out to detail, if I think somebody that when we come in for the bid, they need to give us what they're bid in their area. Let them do it. I mean, that's all that work gets done for free at that point. <clears throat> um, based on some of their observation. And so we, we don't have to do it as a whole, one person come in and do it all. They can do it in pieces, I thought. But, um, but well, then pick and choose our battles, because even though they gave us all these things, I think that there's some options there that we you know we can pick and choose on and let them define each one. And then we can kind of give him some marching orders, so to speak, and say, give us a bit on, you know, remapping this. I understood the 16, and I could be totally wrong, I'm with you, it's a little confusing, is the 16 one saying we're not going to redraw all these drawings, <clears throat> we're going to use these and do the remapping based on the drawing, well then in that case we save $10,000 and I'm all in, you know what I mean? <clears throat> That's what I understood it to be. <clears throat> I, I received the impression from the gentleman when we did the walkthrough right. that the original $1.9 million or whatever that was presented in October uh, was excessive and that they they would come back with their and they did on January 9th. It's around 400. So at that five. point what what caught me by surprise was the fact that they were referencing the 1.9 million plan. Okay. I felt that that was off the table and we were looking at what their recommendations on January 9th were and that's what we would move forward with. <clears throat> Is them having seen the Thompson report? Is that influencing their bid? <clears throat> well, it's They're influencing their bid. It's, I think they, they knew that we had concerns, <clears throat> and when he did the walkthrough that day, he kind of said, no, I don't think that's the case here. And, and then when you read their January 9th report, it's pretty evident that they felt that less, <clears throat> there's much less necessary. So I'm with Kevin. We can have a separate sit down with them and clarify I think, this. I think we need to sit down more than just you, me or just you. We need to sit down and, and have some conversation with them and define what we want. <clears throat> Jeff, to your point, like we did they, when they saw the bid, they didn't. I didn't show them any numbers from that but, bid. But even the work, right? Like they, we gave them. We gave them the blueprint so they didn't have to go tear it apart like they did. What well, yeah. they already paid for that work to be done, so <clears throat> they didn't so have to go tear everything apart. I, I missed something. I <clears throat> Sixteen thousand. If they're using their drawing, why would there be an additional sixteen thousand? I think it's for all the scope and, and defining the mapping, what needs to be done, like if it's in this area. So each each um, they call it elevation um, of the drawing. So yeah. they Define on there exactly what needs to be done, so the bids. Where person's going to take the time <coughs> to go through right. that Thompson report and then come out with? And if we decide we don't, adjust it. we're okay with them not using that. Then they're going to then. Still, I mean, we, I think we have to make that decision prior to number one. And uh, number two, I just, again, I think that we as a group can sit down and decide on some of the things we may or may not want to do. But you think it might be a good option just because <coughs> then they're, they're probably going to focus on the right areas and then we can help decide. Like, well, what based on what they saw, there. they're going to take that blueprint and they're going to yeah. they're going to map what they saw on there versus the other. And I think that if I'm not mistaken, their estimate was about five hundred thousand complete the work and what I thought was very interesting was is when they we went in there um, originally Casey we looked at where all those walls were cracking and stuff and they originally they said that there was from frost coming in and it froze the bull nose on the inside which was ridiculous and so then we looked at it again and we thought well these windows are cockeyed so there's something settling there he was of a different opinion he feels that that can be redone those windows can be popped out they can reshore that and then put a new window in there for substantially less money. But they're prepared to do all those things. Now, whether that was all in here or not, I, I haven't given it that kind of time to be able to sit down and say, you know, every little line item detail. I think it's we're at that stage now where we probably, somebody needs to sit down well, we have to and define the item. scope. Yeah, yeah and we're, and <coughs> have time is starting to run out. On yeah. Yep, I agree. Right. Right. Yep. Getting a bid so, out. Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, we want to get a bid out so someone will start working this year. Yep. So. We just don't want to have right. nothing done by this time next year. Exactly. Have, right. Unfortunately, and I hate to say it, but I think some of the money that we spent with Thompson is going to be wasted. It's just there's no way we can get around that at this point because they were so expansive in their efforts. Well, we can save them to try and restore. Time, if we had, but we also can save some money if we can reuse some right. of those pieces. I mean, 
So, okay. yeah, I'm just saying. Did, just did we actually get anything from the curtains? Mm -hmm. so, I, mean, I, I saw their email. Yep. Can you email the report out to everybody? Um, they're not. They never prepared a scope for the for, for the money they were offering us. They were coming in to do, do an overall look at it, and they gave them the comparison of what they had for Thompson to say, "Are we good with this? I mean, should we just go with Thompsons?" And he said, he "Just like no." And his, he gave his recommendation. And that's why I was surprised when I saw Thompson <coughs> in that email with Lawrence saying, "I was like, oh, that's right. Why, why is referencing Thompson?" If we because they have site drawings and they're all elevation drawings that they can reuse, so they don't have to redo drawings. All the building drawings are already done, so they can just remap what needs to be done. Is so what I took it to be. And again, we're we're both kind of not sure. But okay. I think there needs to be at one point a decision made as to. <clears throat> what exactly do we want to do? It's not that part's not going to be free, but again, we're looking at a half a million dollars versus three. Yeah, two point four well, million dollars. Let's reach out to him and maybe get in a, a meeting and, and try to get in in an afternoon. Yeah. You, you want an evening, or can you make an afternoon I, if I'll, we schedule? I'll work it out. Yep. Same yeah. Here. Same for me. I'll just. Okay. Yeah, you know, we. Were I think talking it's about this for a long time. Yeah, so we need to. If it's you can get a date, and, and like then maybe we can even, line by line even by meet line there if you want. I was going to say, in a <clears> week, we're going to gain an hour. I mean, the email's pretty detailed, yeah. Jeff. I mean, if you want to read over to head of time. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. yeah. Well, All right, see if I mean, we can get a meeting with them. At, at, uh, yeah, yeah, the thing is, at 6 o'clock, by the time we get going, yeah, you, you have to leave it by, well, like, 7 to get here by 7.30. We would have more daylight to look at this. It doesn't have to be a meeting night. We can do... Yeah, that's true. We can we do a non-meeting night and... Just not. You're right. I, not I, think, I think. I think. Go inside and then look, you know, talk about it inside just, the building if we have to. I'll just block my calendar. It's fine. I think we could even take just one hour, one day, and go over to get collectively as a group too, and just review this part, and then that way we could develop our questions as what we have for him. Can you set up I think that would really be helpful. <clears throat> Casey, you so you you've read don't, it. Don't work around my <clears throat> schedule. Work about work around his schedule. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, well, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. He knows what he's talking about, and so, so does Casey, so those two need to be there. Okay. What about... All right, I'll, I'll get an initial afternoon meeting, just us. We should open it up to whoever wants to come. And, you know, with, with that, you know if we need, if people want to come, they can, but just because there's more people that know what's going on, the quicker we'll get it approved. It would be better if we had... Couple hours of daylight, so you could look, be you could have, hold a meeting over there. In my opinion, go look at it, go inside, talk about some of these things. If we have to go back out, and we can go back and forth and you know hash it out right there. All right. All right. So next on the list, if there's no other questions, is update on the surplus asset disposition. Okay. <clears throat> Saturday we had the book sale. It's a double, yeah. double on Chandra. <laughs> yeah, there's a spelling error there. Yeah, kind of forgot a T there. Fat fingers then hit all the K's. <laughs> and we got a lot of asses around here. So yeah, that's, that's what I said. You, it reminds me of Spaceballs, the movie. That joke is already recycled now. <laughs> Did you already bring that up? No, it's somebody Spaceballs? else brought it. No, no, but. It's all right. Four on tilts. So we had the book yeah. sale. Yeah, it's, it's a good. <laughs> it, during the course of the book sale, yeah. a couple of things. Yeah. There was multiple <laughs> questions from people. What are you going to do with all the desks and chairs that were in here? And, and more specifically, one, this is kind of ironic, one lady who attended Birdsboro, lives in Birdsboro, or in the neighborhood at least, uh, is now a teacher at Mifflin, was there with three or four other <coughs> teachers from Mifflin buying books. And wanted to know if they could buy some of the bookcases out of the library at Birdsboro. I see. As far as furniture and fixtures, there hasn't been an official uh, deal. So the question is, do you want to move ahead with an auction of desks, tables, chairs in April? And move with it? Well, what, what do they look like? I mean, why would we sell these? They look almost identical to this. So if, if we sold them out of Birdsboro, they already saw if we, when we open up Birdsboro, we could just take these and move them yeah, over. Currently, they are pushed <clears> to the <throat> other end, the sides of the buildings because of the fitness boot boot camp. We wanted to make a space in there for them. So, um, you know, had the grounds guys move all of them to, to, the, to the outside edges. So they're currently just stacked um, against the walls. I guess so. we're going <clears> to <throat> over the next couple of weeks. You can look at them. Yeah. I think anything that we know we're not going to use 
and that goes for any of the stuff we should try to sell. I mean, and we've talked about that since I've been on the board. Yeah. You know. I'm a little, I mean, the desks are going to have to be replaced because they, the shocks have failed. They're, they're kind of unusable. These kind of shelves and things, uh, you know, that's something you want to kind of, I feel you should want to hang on to or at least have a these replacement are, for. These are in much better shape than what's in the bird world. Yeah, I mean, some it, of them took water damage. Some of them had some termite damage last year, two years ago. Uh, they came in a crack in the wall, so. Um, have, have those been offered to other buildings in the district? We really haven't done anything. We just kind of <clears> moved <throat> them out of the way, um, only because the library we already took out three rows last year right. I went to high school so they weren't using them uh, Monocacy doesn't really have any space for them with their instructional spaces and I think it'd be very hard to, to put them in any of the existing um, schools that we have uh, I mean Curtis can, can speak to that at, at his building you know I'm not sure where you would put them in your building right. you know kind of thing cool. um, so unless you would take in a whole other room you know to use for some Instructional purpose. I mean, do we have a, do we have a good number of desks that we think we would need? If and we might even have that. We might not even have that number. But of the leftover <coughs> desks we have, that let's say two years down the road, three years down the road from now, one they need to go to any school. Do we have a number that we would save, and then, or is there not even enough? Like, what's we have. We went through your basement, so we have a stack of, I think, 50 or 60 downstairs that were still good. Um, and I believe we have about 20 that are up here that are that are good and usable um, without really kind of taking every single desk and taking every top off and that kind of thing. So um, I think we're less than 100 desks that we have that are actually usable desks. And does that count the desks at BC or is there nothing there at BC? There's maybe 10. At BBC. Oh, okay. There's there's two full rooms of desks that have no shocks left in them. Okay. That the shocks don't that do not work. So and there again, I think you know it'd be nice for you guys as well to see that kind of that whole second floor up there when we go over for the meeting with the current wall is to to see the amount of stuff that we, we truly do have over there. Um, I mean heck we cleaned out Curtis's basement the other day and we found ten carts down there, the little three tier carts, the little push carts that were buried. So um, you know, but we're we're through all the the spaces now for the most part okay any other questions on that next uh, high school <coughs> fire alarm panel update um, just uh, we had um, a failure of the booster board that was in the fire alarm panel so simplex came in uh, three Fridays ago two Fridays ago kind of lost track of the days um, and replaced the panel um, so now we have the latest and greatest fire alarm panel that also talks to you. It's just not the, it's just not the, the bells and the sirens. It's uh, <coughs> the messages. Um, there is a there is a fire emergency. Uh, please exit the building at the nearest exit while the problem is being investigated. So that that replays like every 20, 30 seconds with with the bells. Um, it's not as obnoxious so the special needs kids I don't think will have as big of an issue with that now um, because the sirens aren't as loud so uh, they have not had a fire alarm drill <coughs> panels been put in so um, is that why we had the couple dispatches what's that last yes, weekend? yeah we had a couple we had a couple um, dispatches just to bring you guys all up to speed uh, about a month and a half ago we had some false alarms during George's um, basketball games I brought in my contractor on that Saturday. He was unable to define anything that was wrong because it was something within the panel. It's a simplex panel. He thought he had everything kind of isolated and we were good to go. We left an hour later, got a phone call back that the fire alarm panel went out, out again. There again, called simplex in. They found a short, isolated the short, said like, conversation we had was two or three devices were not working in the hallway of the cafeteria. I thought he said everything else was up and running. Lo and behold, a week later, Mr. Spores has a fire drill, pulls a fire alarm, it doesn't go off. Pulls a second pull station, it doesn't go off. Um, we're like, uh-oh, what's, what's going on here? So I called the technician up and he goes, no, I meant everything on the second floor is up and running, the first floor is not working. So there was a miscommunication between him and I. At that point, I contacted Dr. Cooper and I said, uh, we have a problem. We need to get this done. So a simplex, you know, got the price to me right away. 
um, and we were able to get it turned around within about two or three days. So, um, you know, I, I apologize for the miscommunication on my part, um, just honest mistake, you know, kind of thing. So, um, but uh, I thought we were good to go and, and here we weren't. So, apologize for that. But other than that, we were good to go. Uh, they cleaned up the, the wall where the panel was. There was a lot of unneeded equipment. Um, so while they're there, they're like, do you want us to clean everything up? I'm like, yeah, just, just get rid of all the junk. So they pretty much gutted the entire wall. <laughs> so it looks really nice now. So it's good. We were good to go. And they tested all the devices. We walked the building. Every strobe was working. Every <coughs> horn was working. The bells and the annex are working. Um, and if the board decides in the future to upgrade the annex side to put strobes and audibles on that side and smoke detectors, um, you can. Currently, the, the old section of the high school only has pool stations and the old time donging bells on the walls. Do, so those, do those work? They work fine, but there again, it, that's the only, you, you'd have to physically pull a pool station to make the alarm go off on that side of, of, <coughs> of, of the school. You, so, can't, you can't just trigger it. No. Nah. So the panel is able to receive all of those points that we would need. So there's no more, <coughs> we do not have to replace the panel again in preparation if you would decide down the road to upgrade that side of the school. So if a fire started over there, we wouldn't know until the smoke got until the, don't, nobody's in the building. Correct. So like for the, main, the newer section. Correct. Yeah, so from the, so give you a case, the auditorium to the annex park parking lot does not have strobes or detectors. It only has pool stations. So the one story area, if you want to call it that. Have you gotten the price yet? No. I'm almost afraid to. <laughs> I mean, but we should get it. We, we right? were going to, and I, I talked to their sales guy, our, our area manager. He said, you know, let's let's look at it this summer, see see where we're at. Um, you know, if you guys feel the need is quicker, I will get them in here sooner. Like, what percentage um, of the time is an annex in use? As much as the main part of the high school. So it's... It's, it's used I mean, just as, yeah. And think about it, the auditorium, probably the likelihood of the fire starting there is pretty pretty high because yeah. you've got all that equipment yeah, right. in there, and then you got the computer room that Scott's in yeah. further down, which is where all the servers are, if I'm Correct. not mistaken. So there's Correct. your other probably main source for a fire. Get a look so if you, if, if it doesn't you, hurt to get pricey. Okay, I'll get them in here quicker. That's fine. <coughs> and, and, sure and they, and they when the, uh, the yeah. main high school alarm is activated, there's no way they, they couldn't tell you a way to activate the the uh, alarms over in the annex side. No, they automatically go off. So the, all right, so the bells go off when the, the high school go side off. goes off. The annex goes off. Correct. Too. Okay. It's just you do not have strobes, yeah. okay. sirens, smoke detectors. Right, I all misunderstood. That kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I, I thought you said they didn't activate. Yeah, but. it. They were a little concerned because <clears> that is 1963 technology. There's a panel that's about this big in that mechanical room um, that. They were a little concerned of reactivating since they took power away from it. Um, it's actually pretty cool. I told them if they do replace it, I, I'd like to put that in my <coughs> office on like a shelf just to kind of, you know, because it's, it's just really neat old technology. But um, they actually had a guy on call, an old timer, that worked on those systems, and they were on the phone with him to make sure they had it all set up correctly. So, because these, I mean, these guys were 35 year old. 28 year old kid, you know, guys, and they, they've never they've never worked on anything like that. that. That equipment's older than they are alive, you know. So th there's a there's a guy that's like 75 years old that works for Simplex that they have on staff just for those kind of things, is from what they were telling me. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. He also does doors. All right. Uh, we got a lot to go through. So yep. the River Rock classroom area door replacement. Um, attached to your agenda um, are the three proposals for the River, River, River Rock side um, plus, the, plus the classroom doors. Um, just uh, this was discussed last meeting. I know the the cow was canceled, so I just didn't know where we were with approving that and getting that, that ball. I know you guys wanted to do it, you guys agreed to do it, but it was pushed off from January to February, I believe, uh, so the full board could discuss it, but you know, we didn't have the cow, so I just put it on here so you guys all had the copies of the three proposals, so. 9, yes. 9 11, and 13? Yeah. And this is basically just to set up that separate entrance for River Rock? This is the classroom doors that have the Lulu, the, 
louvers like we had in the All attics. Right. That's it. We haven't gone down the road of okay. getting that price. Look, getting that price of okay. because we're waiting for the lease. I, right. I, I believe. Right. Do you have a problem with the lowest bidder? No, that's who I use. Okay. That's that's who I use for everything. I just you guys had asked to give you know to get to get free prices. So, um, Liberty Liber, Liber, Liber Door, their salesman is actually a, uh, a Boone resident. His kids went through the school, um, so I brought him in. Uh, he's been after me to, to give a, an estimate, so um, you know, in, in the attempt to use a local a local guy, their co-stars. All three of these vendors are are co-stars, so that shows you how yep. prices can vary. <coughs> Forty one hundred bucks. You know, because and as everybody knows, co-stars is <coughs> pre-approved pricing, but it's pre-approved pricing mm -hmm. per vendor, not pre-approved right. pricing per product. So I'd say it's a good thing. thing. Right. So Match it's, vendors it's, it's against each of, other. You know, so, so since, since we're, we're you know, talking to them about new lease and potential uh, upgrades and changes to the front area, uh, you know, I, I think we all agree that we should do the new doors, but I'm wondering if we should just kind of hold this <coughs> in our back pocket until we get everything worked out and, and you know, hey, we'll, you know, we're, if there's any, you know, hey, we're throwing in these doors, we're putting the new doors to it, all that stuff. And, uh, you can make the pony up for a portion of it if you ask, right? I know we when we initially discussed our concern was the safety. Obviously, we all right. talk about the safety, right. um, and that seemed to be what was pressing us to want to do it right away. I'm okay waiting and talking, but what are we dealing with with the safety? Yeah, and I, I I think with um, when we talk about the new lease agreement, you know, putting putting that whole front door piece of it into that into that uh, agreement, maybe we can get that. Oh, I, I, I anticipate that. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. change okay, that whole that structure unless they're yeah, part of it. Right. Uh, right. But I, I, that's what I make sure that you know, I don't want, I don't want us putting in new doors and then say, oh, you know what, we're changing minds. We don't want, to, we don't want to renew the lease. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident. I as well. I think the other part of the discussion is a portion of those children are our kids. Some of them are kids. So very, very small portion. Okay. I'm okay with waiting. We just have, you know, everyone's going to uh, throw uh, the. Let's, let's throw it out there. I mean, if you want to. What's uh, what's the lead time typically for? The lead time for those for the wood doors is about six six weeks. Um, you know, we're going to get into their busy season. Yeah. Um, because I actually had the vendor in uh, today to talk about the annex doors, <coughs> annex gym <coughs> doors. Um, so. Uh, he was questioning me like, "Hey, the things we have hanging with you. When are you going to do them? You know, if you're going to do them, because their summer's starting to book up pretty yeah. quick. So this is so. already a summer project. Because best yeah. case, you're going to get them by June. Yeah, and he would do these after hours, just like he did <coughs> our high school. So and, it's, and, it's, and when we talk about the lease agreement, we're doing a lease agreement. We're looking at a target date is the end of April, and the facilities at the beginning of April to get that lease in front of in front of this group <coughs> mid mid April for the." Uh, the whole and then with it, try to get that approved by the end of April. I know you have one more thing, but give me one second. Yes, go ahead. I, I thought, though, I think we need to make a decision coming out of here. At one point, our discussion was to bring this out. We didn't meet last month, I mean, last meeting, but I, I was under the impression our discussion was either to bring <coughs> this out for a yay or a nay, mm -hmm. or are we going to do that tonight, or do we want to table it? I mean, I, I think we should do it. We'll made, make a decision and pending the lease term and we can, make you can still approve it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, yeah. you don't okay. execute it. That's fine. You, can, mm -hmm. you approve the money, but you don't execute it until you get the final and, piece of it. The they're going through the negotiations in April, so it kind of puts it at that time frame where they would be doing it anyway. I mean, even if you waited another month, I mean, it got into May, it's still you're only looking at about a three-week delay. I mean, we've already started having some preliminary conversations <coughs> with them. Right. I think that's what Lauren wants to talk to you right now. <coughs> I'll defer to Dr. Cooper. He was approached regarding using some of the rooms from River Rock to use six rooms upstairs for standardized testing on various days, twice during the school. Yeah, I have, um, I have the language that uh, David sent us, and I was going to bring that up here as well while we were on the River Rock thing. Uh, so from April 15th through May 3rd, they're requesting to use 200, room 200, 201, 202, 203, 204, and 215 in the AM for the purposes and sole purpose is only a PSSA testing for their students. Now, some of those students are ours, keep in mind, um, as a, uh, an, an amended amendment to their current agreement so they can use it this spring. And uh, 
they approached me. I, you know, I worked with uh, David Comer to uh, make an, uh, an amended agreement so that we could execute that by the uh, for put it in front of you for the uh, committee of the whole, and then vote on it at the end of the month of March so that they would have an idea whether or not to use those locations. And then moving forward, uh, we would make that a part of their agreement also um, when we renegotiate. There's two cycles moving forward <coughs> during a year, right? Two testing Correct. periods? So it would be two te testing periods moving forward with the new agreement. One would be a two-week window in January, or I'm sorry, December, and then one would be a two-week, give or take. It all depends on the Department of Ed and when they send those weeks. Um, and it would be AM sessions just for the kids for which rooms are not being utilized. Okay. Um, so I want to ask you know, if we can We don't use those rooms anyway, right? We do not. No. no. Well, Lauren uses one of them for another short days? timer. Short timer. <coughs> but that's it. We this do not use those the far rooms. end. Okay. Right. It's the far end. And we would have the desks to bring in to accommodate the testing. There, there's already desks. There's okay. Location. Yeah. Everything's up there that they can Okay. Use. So we're, they're good to go. And Mr. Hurley asked me to bring the amended agreement, so I think yes, you guys have a copy of. of you might want um, to share that with Dave. I don't know if you got the items as well, so somebody can have this one if you guys need. <coughs> uh, Do you have one, Dave? This is for no additional dollars. Correct. And it is under, well, it's number one there from April 15th through, the, through and including May 3rd. It's that section there. I just kind of summarize what you said. So I'm asking if it's okay to move this forward to the committee to hold. Do we have to approve that? Well, it's, a, it's, it's part a, of the lease. Not, but, it's, yeah. but it's, I mean, are we actually amending the lease or are we just yes. giving them a handshake? Yeah, yeah. it's additional use of the building. But we're not charging for it. Right. Correct. And that's what this is about. <coughs> I'm just saying, let's put it. You're you making it official. Yeah, I can <coughs> put it in writing just in case something happens. <coughs> Kid gets hurt up there. Right. It's it's memorialized. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Moving forward. All right, let's keep this going. Stadium bleacher repair cost. Southern Bleacher Company. Uh, Casey, you want to give us again an update? This is the high school stadium. We had some issues. Yep. Uh, the the this was also discussed at the last meeting. Um, there again with the committee of the whole being canceled. I just was bringing it back to you guys to get on the agenda so we can get the bleachers fixed, hopefully before spring sports starts. Um, I know they are extremely busy right now installing bleachers and making repairs to other people's stuff. So the sooner we can get on their schedule, the more likely <coughs> we're going to have to get ours repaired before the board's got to vote spring it. sports. But we approved it to take it to the board already, right? I thought, I thought we I thought agreed yeah, to approve the we right. So I just, brought, I just wanted to make sure you guys had a copy of it. So That's this all. will be going out there tonight to you guys, so you know. It's all George's fault. They're winning. So they're all right. Well, you know. <laughs> That's a good problem. <laughs> American Legion, formerly Optimus Thanks Field, so baseball field, grass mowing, estimated cost $3,000 and field maintenance. I met with them <coughs> um, at your guys' requests uh, shortly after our last meeting. To have them come, you know, come back and tell them, tell us kind of what they were asking for us. They're asking for us to mow the grass for the entire season. Um, Walters, I asked Nate to, to give us a, a number. He's used to mowing it, uh, local contractor. So it was like ninety-five dollars or hundred dollars per mowing somewhere out neck of the woods. Um, I kind of figured three mowings for every two weeks in spring. So it'd be like a Monday, Thursday, kind of Tuesday, Wednesday mowing, you know, two times one week, one time the next, um, based on the growing season. Um, so I took that till I like, think the end of June, and then one time a week from July till October 15th. So um, it's roughly 30 mowings at $100 a mowing. Um, <coughs> there again, I think that's kind of worst case scenario. Because uh, you know, in, sometimes in July you don't mow for a month. So um, the American Legion just asked us, asked me to present to you guys uh, for the school district to take over the grass cutting, and then of course um, G, uh, ABM has already stated that they would uh, drag and line the field during our high school baseball season. Did, did, weren't they going to come back with a, with a full proposal as well? <coughs> They're working on all of that they, um, with with uh, they want, sponsors. I mean, they wanted and, more than just the mowing, right? They, they wanted to share full costs, and we said, okay, but 
you know, we can't really, we're not in a position to tell you how much you should pay. No, that's, that's exactly what they, we what they about, said right? in, in the meeting. There's, there's you know. repairs. There's they were in the borough there's... meeting, uh, this past borough meeting, reviewing, uh, they, have a, they have a budget they're putting in to repair the fields, and, and they were presenting that to us. And then obviously we'll chip in with with our labor. I remember like twenty five thousand. They're given like twenty five thousand, and that's um, there's a lot in in with that. So I don't know. They're not asking any of that from the school district, and I would think, and I don't want to speak for them, but I think this year they're probably looking at the three thousand because of all the other work that's happening. And then next year, once all that work's done. I think everyone will sit down again and discuss what the maintenance costs are going to be and try to I'm do I'm just thinking, up. like, the sooner they put that in front of us, the better. Well, I don't think – I don't want to speak for them, but I don't think <coughs> we're getting asked for anything else. Other we're not. Than, we're other not. Than this, the grass is, this, is, this is it for this year. They, yeah. they flat out said if, if the school can take care of the grass cut and that is a huge burden off of them, they will take care of the constructions and the repairs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then once they kind of have an idea of where they're headed with sponsorships and stuff like that, because um, they're they're fundraising. I mean, they've called. If you know businesses, if you want me to email you something, they're looking to get you know business sponsors on the on the yeah. stadium yeah. And, and different things. So, so that's what they're looking for on guys. the school district's <laughs> cost. Did this remove that field from the RFP? No, I would keep the it grounds in portion. Forward. I would keep it in that. Because um, this will start July 1st this year. And I don't want to say it because <clears throat> Nate's sitting here, but what happens if Nate closes his doors tomorrow? <laughs> I'm just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not no, just serious. You know, I mean, you, we got to make sure it's in the RFP. Bob, so it's what listed. What if Nate sells that it's a substantial gain? <laughs> well, I know, I'm just saying, but just, you know, I'm just saying, you know, what would happen if, right, if, no, if know. you know, if the person who we are contracting with. We should keep it in because we don't know what's going to happen. So, so if we're keeping it in the RFP, then we would specify that, that the successful vendor would be responsible for all mowing of that field. Correct. Okay. That's easy. Correct. Because we would still incur the cost as a school district, whether it's whether it's Halter or. <coughs> but it's been on doing like it. This was going to be a separate it. contract outside of. If you're not the careful RFP. there. Right. Wow. Now, what, um, what's the plan yeah. for, like, the exactly. infield dirt? Like, you had talked about, like, ripping they, it all out and, I mean, yeah, they're, they're doing all that. They're doing all that. They're doing all that. Halters and Who's another that? contractor. Uh, not us. The, 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 they are, the American, American Legion. Le okay. Le so they're going to. Yeah, I think yeah. Halter, the other contractor. Kevin's like, all right, let's stop Yeah, with, with all the moisture that we've had, I kind of sent an email today, like, listen, you know, let's not put the horse of anything let's let's get if you're let's, put, yeah, let's you're not make a mess now, and then mess. totally destroy the place right. you know kind of thing so um, Lauren if you're gonna put that into the bid it should be an optional that if he's not doing it then it's that's they, right it has it's to be part of because you wouldn't want to pay twice for it you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah I see what you're saying because if they bid it and then they're not doing it and we're paying to get but it they're done, doing so. an is the, the RFP is an hourly reimbursement again correct no, Could that be just an be add alternate? Can you add that in? It's just an add alternate, and then mm -hmm. we can bounce it out if. How many other fields are we maintaining besides that field for a PIAA competition? Well, that's that's that gray area again with the park, because Halters does half the park in during the spring, and then in the fall they switch they switch and halves. Because, and that was because so. GCA refused to do it. <coughs> Correct. So. Under the new RFP, we've included Amity Community Park right. and the American Legion Field as a part of the grounds portion of right. the RFP. Right. So, one way or the other, we're either going to have separate contracts for those two for the field maintenance outside of this, and if the vendors here wanted to bid on those two pieces separately, you could do that. But as far as this RFP going out, you could simply pull that out right now. Right, and there again, I mean that, that three thousand is just on a on a per moment basis. So you know we can very easily say, okay, as of July one, we look at, are we going with the contractor? Or are we going to go with somebody else? Well, you we'd know, be looking at it here in well, April uh, if it's going to be a part of the grounds portion of the RFP. Right. Can we pull it out as an ad alternate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gives them a chance to build all of it and get it all. But we'll still get prices on them that yeah. way if we need to. Yeah. Best case scenario is a certain person wins. We're bidding the bid, all the milling out as a separate item, correct? Hmm? 
Pardon? We're bidding all the mowing as a separate item. Well, currently, you're doing two, right? You're doing an all-in, and then you're doing a, a, a breakout of well, the major parts. Based on this discussion, I think we we'll pull these two field deals out separately from the RFP. Then the rest of the grounds would be the normal mowing of Daniel Boone property. Right, because those are not because the park is not Daniel Boone property, and there's the Optimus. Right. Field. No, I'm, I'm with you. So and then you have an alternate, so they can then bid right. on that, so you can see those prices. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can award. Maybe he wants to bid on the. Yeah, right, he might bid on everything, and then he'll right. bid on the ad alternate. Maybe he wins it all. And then he could bid on the groundskeeping portion right. of the district, which would be just the right. lawns right. surrounding district buildings. So this spring, the only thing that's going to be happening is they're going to mow. GCA is taking care of it. But nothing's the being done to the field. Possibly not. Because the weather's it's, just it's not. too late now. Yeah, and we won't be able to get sod cut until probably the they won't be. They're not going to cut sod probably now until first or second week of April. Yeah, that's what they said. What the about the other things? I know they talked about a fence. And I know they were talking repairs. about netting. I don't know. I think that's going to. That's going to. If they get the funds in for the netting, I think that that'll go up. Like that's. Yeah. They're trying to get one company. I think to maybe sponsor that. <coughs> Got to ask. Sure. I don't tell you. Ask. <laughs> All right. Uh, high school rekey update. Annex. Yeah. <laughs> Annex gym doors. Um, high, high school rekey is is complete. Uh, the courtyards, the remainder of the key cores came in. Um, they were installed <coughs> during the last uh, little break we had. So that is all done. The only area that does not have the new key system in is the uh, the mullions and the dog down. So that's the panic bars. That you can dog down and then the bar between the double doors that you can remove to bring in something big. Um, that was not part of the original rekey. Um, uh, after talking to Mr. Spores, we're going to limit the uh, entries of entry, uh, the entries that they can remove the mullions to, I believe, three. <clears throat> All the rest we're going to blank in some manner. So we're trying to figure out exactly the most cost effective way of doing that at this point in time. With the 48 doors that we have, I think uh, last on my last count, we <coughs> had somewhere around 180 panic bars between those 48 entries and about 60 mullions. So you're talking 250 key cores that either need to remove and blank, or they make a thing called a blockout blade that you can actually slide in the key cylinder um, so no key would fit. It takes a special key to, rem to put that in and remove it. Um, that's only like I think 10 or 12 bucks compared to a $30 <coughs> key core. So, um, so that's that one's just going to be a maintenance <coughs> issue on, on our side to, to finish that part up because that wasn't ever part of the original. Um, the annex gym doors, those doors are original. They've been retrofitted three different times by the amount of holes that are in those doors <coughs> with different <coughs> styles of panic bars and hardware. We attempted today to lock those doors. Uh, those key cores are still the very old originals. Uh, key cores in those doors, half of the doors we cannot lock. Um, to replace, that's why I had A.G. Marlin today, to replace the... By lock you mean you can't go in or out? You can't lock the door from the I'm outside. I'm saying if you were to lock it, locking it would mean you can't go in or out. You can't like, lock the door. That's the problem. No, I know, but if if you could, locking the door... You would not be able to enter from the hallway. Okay. You'd be able to leave, but you would not be able to enter from you. the hallway. Um, there's no means to lock it from the inside, um, like our current main <coughs> high school gym. So um, after talking to the vendor today, our thought was, and he had priced this literally two years ago um, when we did the original rekey, but at that point we were spending a lot of money on doors and everything, so we kind of held off on that. Um, so he just gave me an updated price. So it's actually five pairs of doors. The existing door closures are in the floor. Um, they're, they're little hydraulic pistons that are in the, in the floor. Half of them do not work. Actually, I think almost all of them don't work. Um, so um, this one's for you there, Mr. Scott. Um, Can I guess? Five, five pairs of doors replaced. 
Go ahead. What, what do we Five get? times seven, 35. 10 doors. 35,000. 10 doors? 10 doors. What's oh. the over and under? 35. That's I'm my. Going, I'm going 42. Uh, this is like Price is Right. You going over. Because we have 35 he's, he's already added one of three things that are. That are 26,200 dollars. Oh, that's a bargain. Oh, way off. See? See? So they are, <laughs> they are five foot <laughs> door openings instead of your six foot door openings, uh, and they're yeah. short doors. <laughs> Um, but in order to Church properly Church. lock that space, um, those doors would remain locked all the time, um, and then uh, the staff would just have to unlock them when they enter them. Um, and that way, we save a good amount of money by not having the, do the soldiers <coughs> on the inside. Uh, it saves about two hundred dollars a door. Why would you lock them from the inside that? anyway? Why would you need to? I mean, the panic door has to work as a panic door because it's a fire escape, isn't it? Well, if you don't, if you keep the door unlocked so you can enter from the hallway, you'd have to go out into the hallway to lock it down. On in the case of a, a an active shooter, gotcha. the reason you put the cylinder on the inside is so you can lock it from the inside. That's all. Um, but if we keep the door, if we don't give them the ability to unlock the door, um, it would kind of be a <coughs> storeroom function that the door is locked all the time and only be able to unlock with a key. Gotcha. Um, and for that, Jim, I think it makes the most sense because it's kind of in the all by itself over there then that way you know it's always it's always secure the only issue with that is it's used all the time um, the only issue is of course if you have it locked all the time and a teacher forgets their keys and there's kids in there horsing around you can't get in without a key that's the only that's the only downside of it so um, don't lose your key but yeah so you're looking 20 the problem is that these are these are <laughs> there's there's these sets of doors. There's a band room doors. There's a very few more doors that um, you're going to hear from me about about getting replaced. Hopefully, tape that. Um, you know, but I, I, I hope anyway. I mean, the total doors on the the That's total the doors high on the on the on the high school. Those are about. Those are about. We're not asking for that tonight, though. What's that? We're not asking for that tonight. No, okay, no. All right, but now they will give it to Lawrence. The bullions did you today? Because I know, like the band, oh, would, when they had their indoor show, there was that one door, and I, it's in the annex side that they would use, and we pull that out so the the groups would come in. That, yeah, is that what that so is? That's one, one, one. I, I didn't know if you stay. talked yep. to the groups right. and which ones they needed. Yeah, I right. think we're doing door one, door five, door eleven, and door thirty-six to, to give them the ability. So that gets you front door, middle of the annex, annex end, <coughs> and gym end mm -hmm. kind of thing. So. Um, I left that up to the high school administration to tell yeah, me. Yeah, so. I mean, the band goes out the back, yep. I mean, between that, in that On door 24. Yeah, above the yeah. stadium? Is yep. that what that is? Yep. Yep. Okay. You hit the annex classroom replacement update too, right? Yep. All right. That's all done. Let's go to train. Let's keep spending the money. Train project update. Um, equipment is ordered. Um, We're shooting for Easter. We're shooting for Easter to do all of the rigging of the equipment onto the roof. Um, the Thursday and Friday before Easter since we now have school on that Monday. So I actually <coughs> talked to Train um, Friday and again this morning. Um, he definitely thinks he can hit those hit those timelines and uh, <coughs> they'll probably have guys on site in a couple weeks to start doing some of the control upgrades ahead of time. So um, the only one I have to work out is the library equipment, the library units. You have to access them through a classroom. Um, the one science room up upstairs, so I have to talk to the high school administration to see if we can get them to move for a day or two So that they can tear everything out mm -hmm. and, and stage. It's just a timing, you know thing. So um, we'll get I just want to let everybody know that you know, we're, we're on our way. Good Daniel Boone area intermediate center playground equipment replacement the playground equipment over here at the intermediate <coughs> center is original it is failing the two sliding boards are, are breaking and broken. Um, the, there's a climbing tube that has plastic steps in it. <clears throat> Half of the upper ones are busted totally, which I was not aware of. Um, so, and then there's the uh, walkway bridge where they're fastened together. That metal has fatigued and stretched and cracked and is broken, which has been caution taped off since last year already. Um, the manufacturer was doing a computer upgrade and their system crashed, so they've lost about a month's worth of orders. So that's why I don't have any pricing. But I apologize for that. Okay. So um, it's Play World <coughs> Systems. So uh, I got an email on Thursday or Friday that their system was back up and running. 
So I'm, I'm resending them all of the pictures of all of the pieces to make sure that what they have on their drawings is what the picture is. So we make sure it bolts up. What if it's like 15 years now, 13 or 15 years? So we just look at replace the parts, or we're looking at any new structures or the structure looks great. I mean, the the paint's not peeling anywhere substantial. I see zero signs of rust, zero signs of anything cracking. Um, I kind of spent an hour on it the other day, literally crawling around it, trying to see, because some areas look any, like they're, they're pictures of me crawling around on it. <laughs> no, I made sure of that. I made sure nobody was around for that one. I was afraid I was going to get stuck in some of the slides, to be honest with you. <laughs> now that would have been a great picture. That would have been a great picture, yes. Yeah. Your back yeah. end sticking out of the tube. Yeah. yeah. That'll be the holiday card right there. All right, so price is coming. Price is coming. I'll have that hopefully for you next next month. Yeah, I don't know how much, any idea. I mean, have we, have we thought, I mean, I, mean, you know, the, I, I think this is one of those great PTC parent fundraiser activities that it, Maybe we can get the parents to, well, you know. We'll see what we'll see what our cost is going to be. Until the playground equipment isn't cheap, so it'll be pricey. Yeah, okay. and replacement's a nightmare because they literally set the equipment with two by fours and timbers, and then they back a cement truck up and just dig holes around the base and just pour. Um, so there's really not like footers that you would think for like a pole or something like that. It's just a big. Be in the mix, Steve, yeah. When you have to remove it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> We're just replacing the, the broken... The bad pieces. Sections. Some of the pieces are in really good shape. It, it's it's kind of weird what has failed and where it's failed. Um, I don't know if somebody was in there vandalizing it, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, those upper plastic steps, <coughs> and the top one's gone. I mean, it's just, it's gone. I'll be surprised after 15 years if they can provide parts. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what happens. <coughs> Past experience as you're replacing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Daniel Boone Area Primary Center camera discussion. Um, we received the $25,000 Safe Schools grant with the intention of putting cameras um, in our primary center. So I had Berkshire Systems, I forgot to grab the paperwork, Berkshire Systems gave me a budgetary number of $47,000 to uh, install 30 IP cameras, all <laughs> POE, uh, I believe it was 12 outside and 18 inside. Um, that's the salient software package, which is the same we have at the high school and the middle school. Um, install, uh, does not include install the cameras or the wire pull, pulls. That includes just the cameras, the software, the licenses, them setting it up, them programming it, so on and so forth. What's the annual licensing fee? There's no, an, and there's no, one time? And there's no fee per year. It's just you buy it on a camera basis so when I buy the system I'll buy a 36 license package with that software program um, so I'll have the ability for 36 cameras currently we're pricing it for 30. Um, the software is shot in five years and you got to pay an upgrade. Right. And, and our, you're bound and by their so, system current, for the next um, current network, I mean, do these have, to have individual... They're bought up by train. With our current <laughs> new networks that we have, all the network that we've been spending money on, yeah. and they tap into that with some of this it stuff? Is, yeah. And then number two, can, is any of it wi fi -able? I mean. You all, that was my next... Well, that's, still that's, you, need, you still need power for it. It's power yeah, so it's, it's, all, it's all POE. So, so otherwise it's right. battery. And I got the you. other Batteries option is um, Meraki, is Cisco, um, is owned by Cisco. Uh, they sell a, they make a camera. Um, it is its own little computer. You literally run a Cat5 <coughs> cable to it. Um, you give it an IP address. It's Wi-Fi. It stores its own memory. Um, <coughs> And it and it talks to our network, and everything is in the cloud. So everything's hosted by Meraki. Everything is offsite. Um, the cost of that is uh, for the 30 cameras, we're about twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand dollars. I don't have the exact number off the top of my head. Um, there again, does not include install. Does not include the wire pull. So as you can see, the Meraki cameras are about a twenty thousand dollars savings compared to your conventional have your own DVR server and everything like that. So, um, What did they need um, a Cat5 for if it's Wi-Fi? You still need power. You need POE. Oh, they're gonna get, they're gonna get, okay, get yeah. power from Cat5, yeah. I got you. Yeah, so, so the, it'll, it'll we, all be POE. So are we working towards a system where all the schools will be accessible from one location? Yeah, then this, this, would, this would, I mean, our, our current 
uh, the, <coughs> the, the, the salient servers currently are that way. Um, so I can, view, I can view them on my phone um, yeah. if, if I wanted to. Um, the Meraki would be the same way. It would be uh, a web, web, web website that you log, log into. Um, yeah, we're here. If you're looking from a district perspective, you'd be working off of two systems. Yeah, unfortunately, we would be working off of two systems moving forward. Um, but it's um, Reading School District just put 600 of these Meraki cameras in. Um, and they're, and they're <coughs> really, really slick. They have the most motion activated. Like, if you want to search for motion in the corner of this room if we have a camera, you highlight that corner of the room and you tell it to search and it'll find every speck of that video that had motion in that point. So if you know there was an incident in that corner, you don't have to sit there and watch 10 hours worth of video. It'll, it'll give you every, every bit of, of, of video that only has motion in that one <coughs> point. Um, most of your most of your standard IP cameras and softwares, like our salient server, does not have that. Even though it's a new system, it does. Our cameras don't have that, and our our software does not have that option. Um, so what Meraki did was Meraki said, "Okay, I'm going to give you every bell and whistle in this camera." Um, the only problem with their with their system is you buy a five year license with the camera. Um, so every five years you have to rebuy a license. That license is about three hundred dollars <coughs> per, per, per camera. Per camera. But what's the server cost you too? I mean, the upkeep on the server. Well, and that's where you know I technology. talked to Scott Matz about it, and Scott's like, if you can get it off site and you can get it in the cloud, please do. You know, right. kind of thing because you know the time he he figures he on our current camera system he spends between fifty and eighty hours every year just working on our camera system if there's a, a failure or an upgrade that didn't take or, or whatever so there's too you know so um it was and it also eliminates the need of him having a server him maintaining that server um so, so every five years you're looking if you got three another cameras, ten thousand dollars yeah, yeah. Um, how many year, year, this, year does, this years these cameras last anyway well your cameras I mean any piece of it's network outside, equipment or, or, i mean the, the inside one should last you a, a long time i mean i i I personally do not have that. I don't. I don't know that off the top of my head. But I, I can. I can tell you. Um, you know, Reading did the study. Reading has been like Meraki's local sales guy. Um, they actually did a promotional video for them, kind of thing, after they put them in. Um, and their IT guy flat out said, "I would never go any any other way," just because all the all the software updates come in automatically download automatically into the camera so if there's any you know updates that they, that they have to send out it, it, it's all included so the difference of twenty thousand dollars you're probably you're looking at 15 year span before you break mm -hmm. before you break net so i can't imagine anything technology lasting 15 years right. today right. i mean right. bounce with you right. by then it'll be something totally different right. you know right so um so that's that's kind of that's kind of where we're at i can definitely um kathleen had given me some information on another camera system i did not have a chance um, to reach out to those people yet. Um, it seems it's very similar to Meraki. I just don't know where the price point is with it and, and, and what advantages they have over Meraki or disadvantages. So so we're probably looking at 30000 Right. Plus install. Plus install. So um, and you can figure... 50, well, um, you went Berkshire, you didn't have the install included. No. Right. right. Um, and um, uh, <coughs> the Berks County Intermediate <coughs> Unit just did Meraki with Berks Western Telecom, I think, did all their installs. Their installs ranged between 550 and 750 per camera, depending on where it was. Um, I had talked to Pakota Electrical. They do almost all the install work for Berkshire Systems, and they told me a flat fee of like 725 per camera installed. Uh, that's mounted, that's wire pools, ends terminated, the whole nine yards. So between Berks Western Telecom and, and Pagoda, you're kind of at the same, the same cost per, per camera. So you're looking, you know, with Meraki you're looking twenty-seven thousand dollars for the cameras, another twenty twenty-five thousand dollars for install. So you're looking right around forty-five fifty thousand dollars. And twenty-five of it's covered with the twenty-five is covered with the grant, correct? Right. Whereas we're at forty-seven plus another, plus, another, plus, plus probably another twenty-five. Yeah. So so it seems uh, like Meraki's going to win. Yeah. So I'll get you some firm numbers on everything. Uh, for and you're going to check. Kathleen's and I'm going to check with, with with Kathleen's other uh, other vendor. Um, I wish. Tell you it was already done. 
Yeah. It was ver ver. They just would have flown in there and put themselves in, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next we have track expanse and shop put area, old light bases. So we've discussed um, the track expansion. I had ATT Sports come in. Um, it's who They were recommended to me by Turf Track and Court, who does our field grooming on our turf. Uh, he works with them on designs and installs. They use Schlauch Excavating for their uh, all their macadam work. So they are coming in um, possibly next week to, to get me a, a firm number on what they feel the expansion of the starting line would be, uh, including the fencing changes, you know, total turn key that they would come in and take care of everything. So, um, so with that, I'm going to show them the shot put area that's currently grass um, to get that done with cinders. Uh, they said, you know, they, they would want to do this work mid, you know, summertime. If, if we're going to do the track expansion, to do it in the summer because it's less restoration they're going to have to do. Hopefully, the ground's firmer um, in those areas. Same thing with the shot put area. And then I'm also going to show them the old light bases. So if you remember, uh, actually the only person that was on the board was, was I think you, Mike. Um, <laughs> the one light pole fell over. Yeah. That was where the band used to practice <clears throat> down in the grass area two and a half years ago. Uh, one of the bolts nuts came loose and, yeah, and it, it vibrated and sheared the bolt off and it fell over. We dropped the other one um, and we disposed of them, but we still have the concrete bases that are down there. So my thought was, if we're going to have equipment there, I'm going to show them that as well um, and have them remove those bases as well. Because I know Nate has a fun time mowing around those, don't you, Nate? <laughs> um, the wire's still pulled into them. The wire's mm -hmm. disconnected, of course. But uh, um, those, those two bases are about, about two foot square, two and a half foot square, about sticking out of the ground, about two, two and a half feet. So, um, so we're going to try to... Track me. What's that? 30 minutes after track me. Came down. Yeah. The kids weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there again, you know, that's that's just kind of an FYI for you guys. District wide, since you're on a roll, district wide. Yep. Outside district wide lighting. outside lighting. Um, there again, that was uh, we kind of discussed it quickly at the last meeting. I believe it was a cost of eleven thousand through train to um, put all of our outside light contactors under. Uh, the ability to program them remotely. Um, right now we have four time clocks at the high school. One, two, three, yeah, four or five. Four for sure, maybe five. Time clocks at the high school. We have one here. <coughs> we have one at Amity. And we have one, two, <coughs> three contactors at the middle school. Um, that currently are your old style pin, slide, tying the pin kind of thing. As a matter of fact, tonight we lost power here for three hours. I had to go fix the time clock kind of thing. So um, there again, far from a necessity, um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that if that's something, you know, um, you know, some, something to entertain down, down the road, you know. Because um, train doesn't get enough for our money. <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> well, it's just, it's one of those things. It's, um, but companies have monopolies. Like I said, M Monocacy, we have it. It's it's very nice. You know, daylight savings comes up. I can just hop on the computer, do a it couple of clicks of the mouse. It doesn't switch and, for daylight savings yeah. times itself. <laughs> really? It? No, it doesn't actually. <laughs> it doesn't actually. <laughs> you know. Just buy an iPhone 8. I did. Uh, <laughs> 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 right off there. You're aware. You're aware. You guys had at the garage. <laughs> Save the district. Yeah. Thousands of hours. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had a... Jeff would be out there with a soldering gun. <laughs> Teague welding it. <laughs> you guys are tough. Um, Aaron just reminded me, um, we had a, a break up at the high, high school garage. Um, the water line coming into the building separated. Um, and for whatever reason, we didn't see it. I mean, I drove past that garage two or three times that those two days and did not see any water coming out of the out of the garage door um, but we had quite the little pond inside the garage uh, his guys uh, were, were trying to find the leak and found it um, we turned it off um, 
So we've got all the equipment that was in there that was wet up on skids so it can dry off from the underside. So, um, yeah, so that was a that was one that never happened before. Yeah, that's that'll, a, that'll be a decent so, bill. Yeah, so no worry about a water bill, right? That's definitely going to – it was a good leak. Yeah. yeah it's going to be high bill. They found it because we, we knew we had something leaking on the high-pressure side and it wasn't blowing through the street. And I jokingly said to the guys, go up to the high school and find it. And – they went up to the high school and found it because it could only be there immaculate the only two buildings that if there was a leak on the high pressure side wasn't blowing the street apart and yeah we had the heat the heat was on so just the the fitting just poof blew apart <clears throat> so that, that high acid water in the first burst yeah it's high acid that's right <laughs> <laughs> and lead and what else you want <laughs> no so well i'm sure we'll we'll Sure, you'll get a bill, and we can discuss I'm that. Sure we'll <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we got to put on the church tonight. I, I said we can discuss that. So. Yeah, that's a good point, Mr. Mr. <laughs> on okay. that note about the church, in the lease, um, it said that it's approximately fifteen thousand eight hundred and forty square feet, right at the top. I changed that to um, as depicted in exit uh, exhibit A. Because it's not exactly 15,840 feet. So I want to make sure that I didn't want to put a number in there based on what we had discovered today. But Exhibit A outlines the area, and so it, we're good. It highlights the area that just sort of feels it a little is bit more It makes it cleaner. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you're a yes vote, Mr. Rathcap, we'll work on the other issue. How's that? <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll trust your, 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 your honor. We'll shake on it. We'll shake on it. Yeah, shake on it. <laughs> And then just the, the 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 last item, I just keep on there. Um, snow here. removal, they did not do a very good job. Um, I asked them to uh, send their people home um, around 10 o'clock in the morning and have them come back to clear the snow when the rain started. Um, found out that some staff did do that and some staff did not. The staff that did not, of course, ended up causing the... Uh, icing that we had here, the icing that we had at the high school. Um, the one storm I actually had to jump the curb and plow the sidewalks at the high school because they did not clear <coughs> them properly. So um, it was about 15 minutes before the kids were coming in. I got a call from Mr. Spores saying, hey, the front sidewalks are a mess. I said, I'm going to be there in a few minutes. I got there, jumped the curb at door nine of the annex, and I just plowed my way right down down to 345 and hop the curb and way back through and cl clean it up again so um, so the kids got got in safely uh, they salted shortly after you know right after I was done and, and the kids got in safely but um, you know their 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 practices are what they are so I just want to you know I'm not going to be a dead horse so what, well, I'm sorry what since I was um, what did we miss up for the uh, first item that draft? Uh, Lauren uh, was reviewing the timeline. Uh, if you want to just hit that real quick again, it's, a, it's, it's broken out. My, my question is: Do we actually have what we're going out with? Yes. Yes. Right here. Brian is going to be uh, having a conference call with us later this week to finalize it, and I had my dates reversed here. The uh, it'll be. Advertise the 14th of March, mandatory meeting on the 18th. It'll be due back. <coughs> He's interrupted. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It'll be due back here April 1st be re to the district, reviewed here at the facilities committee on the 8th of I, April. I guess my concern is do, do, do we hash out what employees are bringing back to the district? We're, that's part of the, the conference yeah, call with Brian on and, and Casey on uh, later this week. So, and then, then we'll uh, we share, we'll share with us with the committee. Yeah, okay. I'll, once I get the finalized okay. draft, it'll be going up. I'll send it to the board. Just to let everyone know, uh, they're here for the photo for the school board. So, <clears throat> um, 
Where are we taking it? Do you want anything emailed to you for clarification? Or you, I, 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 my big concern is, is the employees are bringing, we're going to bring, that they're going to recommend and bring back in. That's, that's what my, and, and my, you know, and just to my concern, you know, I know we, we have issues and I know we bring some back in, but, you know, the previous board spent a lot of grief outsourcing this thing. Mm -hmm. and I don't want to completely throw away all that and then also are bringing too much back in, you know what okay. I mean? There's got to be a good balance it's, there somewhere. It's being uh, submitted, advertised as base and alternate. Okay. So you'd be getting responses both ways. Aaron, you want to conclude the meeting? Oh, yeah. Uh, meeting's over.